Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're discussing the record-breaking Hurricane Barrel, which is now Category 4, Tropical Depression 3 forming in the Gulf of Mexico, and right behind Barrel, a potential tropical storm or hurricane in Invest 96L. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Sunday, June 30th, 2024. The Black Arrow is our Category 4 hurricane, 130 mile per hour winds rapidly intensifying uh, since we made our last video into a Category 4 hurricane threatening St. Vincent and the Grenadine Islands within the next by tomorrow morning, I should say, around 7 a.m., potentially make a landfall. Then we have in purple our newly formed Tropical Depression 3 on its way to becoming our next tropical storm. And if it doesn't do so because it makes landfall before uh, it can become a tropical storm, we have right behind Barrel in pink, Invest 96L knocking on its heels, uh, trying to become a tropical system as well. And then we have a weaker tropical wave moving through the Eastern Caribbean in blue. Here's the spin and vorticity of all of our tropical entities that we are watching. The one in the Gulf on the left is TD3, where we have a tropical wave in the Eastern Caribbean. And then we have Barrel, and then right behind Barrel, Invest 96L, which has got two clubs of vorticity and spin that are trying to consolidate into a closed low. So let's discuss barrel. The most important thing about this right now is get yourself prepared anywhere from uh, Granada, v St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Tobago. You guys need to be on the prepared now, basically, to get re ready for this storm. It's got winds of 130 miles an hour. So this is going to be life-threatening in terms of wind. You got a lot of rain coming depending on the core of this where it lands and storm surge and wave height now the only thing that's going to stop this thing from strengthening further right now would be an eye wall replacement this is a microwave scan of how this storm intensified over the last 24 hours you can see how that eye wall towards the end of this loop really tightens up to commit become a category four now, an eye wall replacement would slow this down if you see the outer bands here. If those wrap around and become a secondary outer, uh, outer wall, and then that would collapse the inner one, and then it would take time for that outer one to consolidate into a tighter one, which would ultimately make this a stronger storm in the end because it's like a, a figure skater bringing their arms in while they're twirling and they spin faster. But right now, we don't see that happening. Uh, this is going to maintain Category 4 strength, uh, but if we do see any eye wall replacement happening between now and tomorrow morning, that would help weaken this storm before any landfall with the Caribbean islands. So like I said, 130 miles an hour, moving west-northwest at 18. Category 4 strength moving its way right now somewhere in the St. Vincent's and Grenadine uh, islands. Uh, it's going to forecast to go between Granada and Tobago, uh, but they're under hurricane warnings as well. And this is looking to maintain major hurricane strength all the way to almost Jamaica. And then depending on the models, uh, and if it goes over Jamaica or not with the uh, forecast right now, it's still uncertain if it will, will determine how much strength it has as it moves its way towards the Yucatan Peninsula. Will it still be a hurricane? Will it still be a major hurricane? Will it be downgraded to a tropical storm because of land interaction? Still too far out to say that far out. Right now, our main concern is St. Vincent's, the Grenadines, Granada, Tobago. You're going to see the biggest impacts from this storm in the next 12 hours. Here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center. You can pause this to take a chance to read it. On the left is in English, on the right is in Spanish. Now the forecast is pretty tight. You can see the her forecast models are pretty in agreement that this is going to be moving through the Caribbean in a very northwest, northwest direction. Maybe a tick northwest as we have an upper level trough that's going to try and pull this north. 
through the Caribbean, uh, but then we're going to have high pressure over the southeast United States, push this towards the Yucatan Peninsula, and then from there, uh, it's way too far out to know if this is going to be impacting South Texas or not. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. Uh, but in case you can start making preparations now, if you feel necessary right now, we have a category four storm on our hands. We won't, we shouldn't see a category five unless we go through an eye roll replacement cycle. Uh, but even then we're going to see some wind shear in the, once it's in the Eastern Caribbean. So that could keep it from strengthening as well. Now, it's going to be a little bit different in this video because this storm is so compact. I don't want to use the GFS or the European models, which are global models. I want to use the hurricane models. So this model is right now called the h -Wharf. I think it's got the best uh, idea of where th this storm is going to go because the low pressure system of this storm right now, thanks to the hurricane reconnaissance efforts, is a 960. And at the same time, on the model run from this morning, uh, on the H wharf, it predicted at this time of the day, as I'm recording this video, would be a 964. All the other models are a little bit higher than that, at 970, 974. So this one has the best idea of what's going to happen to the storm, I think, going forward. And it's rapidly intensified since our last video to a Category 4 because we had these very warm waters. You can see it also passed through an area where we had 30 degrees uh, Celsius, which is almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a lot of warm water to deal with. It's also warmed down to depths of 100 meters. We have this upper level ridge overhead creating a very favorable wind shear environment. So that's protecting this moisture bubble of a compact storm from the Saharan air layer to its north. Now in 12 hours or so, you can see by the time we get to tomorrow morning, sometime between 7 and 10 a.m., we could see this making landfall somewhere in the St. Grenadines and St. Vincent's. Uh, so you can see the, the purples here, that's the hurricane force winds that are extending out from this storm. And then uh, you can see the other islands around here, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada. So it's very compact. So as this moves through, you might not even feel the tropical storm force winds because it's so small, but you will feel the outer bands of this system as it moves through. And those will pack a punch as well. As you all know, living in these regions, any rain bands coming in from a hurricane will cause some squally weather for a short period of time as it moves through. So here's the three hurricane models that we were using to forecast this today. On the top is the uh, H, is the AFSA, and then the B is to the bottom, I mean to the top right. And then on the bottom is the H wharf, which is the one we were using just earlier because we think it has the best idea of what's going to happen to this storm. So you can see the difference in the, in the pressures for this time of day. So we'll use the A parent first. And you can see it's going to move through as a category uh, four and three before weakening with land interaction with Jamaica, high wind shear environment, and then it recovers as it goes towards the Yucatan Peninsula. Now the B version of this model is the weakest of them all, showing that it'll be a ma major hurricane, but then weaken substantially as it goes through the Western Caribbean, re-strengthen just before Yucatan Peninsula before making landfall. And then the H wharf, we think, I think it's got the best grip on this right now on the storm. But you can see it's also going to go over Jamaica, lose a little bit of strength because of that, and then be a Category 4 on its way potentially again into the Gulf of Mexico. But you can see how all three of those models moved it north slightly, while in the Eastern Caribbean, because of that upper level trough, that's going to not only bring some wind shear to keep it weaker, um, and then also pull it north, and then land interaction weakens the storm before the in the Western Caribbean, it regains that upper level ridge and starts to re-strengthen on its way towards the Yucatan Peninsula. So here is on day five, the position of the storm on all three of our hurricane models. As you can see, it could be as far north as north of the Yucatan Peninsula, crossing the Yucatan Peninsula, or just moving through the strait between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula. 
and all three of those are still a possibility five days out from now and once it's in the Gulf of Mexico obviously everyone needs to be on alert um, but depending on the speed of the storm the strength of the storm and the position of the Bermuda Azores high and the southeast pressure over the high pressure over the United States will determine if this will curve north into the Gulf Coast of the United States, continue in the northwest track towards southwest, uh, towards the western portions of Mexico or South Texas. Still too far out to say for sure. Let's not forget, we also have Tropical Depression 3, which just formed. As you can see, we have this cluster of thunderstorms bringing a ton of rain to the region. That's going to be the biggest threat of this storm. It's got an elongated low pressure system, but if once it tightens up, potentially be, we could see Tropical Storm Chris just before landfall, as forecasted by the National Hurricane Center. It's got winds of 35 miles an hour right now. The, once it's at 39, it will be a tropical storm, and it's moving west at 12 miles an hour, expected to make landfall in the overnight hours around 1 a.m. on Monday. And as we saw before, the biggest threat will be from rain, mudslides from the higher terrain in this region. And here's the models showing where it's going to go, as well as the intensity, potentially a short, very short-lived tropical storm if it gets to that strain. And then behind Barrel, we have Invest 96L, as I discussed in yesterday's video, thought it would become 96L based on the model trajectory of this storm. You can see how we have that low level spin, very low in the circulation of these thunderstorms, but we have competing areas of spin. So that's gonna take some time to consolidate. It's got a 40% chance of doing so over the next two days and a 70% chance over the next seven days. Here's the spaghetti track guidance model showing that it's gonna take a pretty similar path to what Barrel's gonna do in terms of where it may make, make landfall, maybe a little bit further north of where Barrel is today based on the model runs. But you can see Trinidad, Tobago, Granada, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines are all in play once more with this storm. And it too could potentially, on the high end, get up to a, a Category 1 hurricane. But this one potentially will just maintain tropical storm strength in the wake of Barrel which would be a good thing. We don't need a second major hurricane moving through this early in the season to the same areas they're going to see barrel in the next couple of hours. In terms of where this can go in the next seven days, black is the projected path of barrel. Pink is the projected path of Invest 96L. And as you can see, both of those storms are pretty much back to back from one another. So Tropical Depression 3 could become Tropical Storm Chris in the next few hours before it makes landfall. We're tracking Hurricane Barrel to see if it's going to maintain its major hurricane strength as it goes through the uh, Caribbean islands in the next 12 hours tomorrow morning and then through the Eastern Caribbean early next week. And then if it makes any beeline towards the United States beyond the seven day mark. And then Invest 96L will be on the heels of Barrel, so we'll keep an eye on that for everyone in the Caribbean as well. And depending on if TD3 becomes Tropical Storm Chris first, we'll see Chris and Debbie, or we could just see Chris if Tropical Depression 3 stays Tropical Depression 3. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the Ciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel because you like what we're doing here, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew and like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.